as a young citizen of India, armed with technology, knowledge and love for my nation, with the vision of transforming India into a developed nation, I am joining Shobhith University. What about you? Very good morning to all the participants from India and abroad. The Soviet Institute of Engineering and the Technology Meerut, they deem to be university, and it's a center for agricultural informatics and e-governance research studies, and center for agribusiness and, man and disaster management studies. Extend greetings to all the participants from India and abroad who are attending today's national webinar series on doubling farmers income by 2022 after nirbhar bharat in agriculture the webinar series is being host hosted on every thursday at 11 a.m to 1 p.m indian standard time today is 12th august 2021 this webinar is on the topic agri tech new horizon in indian agriculture agri tech new horizon in Indian agriculture. On behalf of the Honorable Chancellor, Honorable Vice Chancellor, the faculty members of the university, and on my behalf, and as Professor Emeritus and Chairman of the Centers of Excellence, Center for Agricultural Informatics and e Governance Research Studies, and Center for Agri Business and Disaster Management, Disaster Management Studies, and Center for Informatics Development Solutions and Applications and Center for Industry 4.0 Technology Studies and Application and Center for Health Informatics and Computing of the Soviet Institute of Engineering and Technology, Meerut. Welcome the today's guest speaker, Mr. Dinesh Shah. He is the co-founder and managing director, Omniwar, a leading agri-tech venture capital, Mumbai. So far, for the benefits of the participants and the guest speakers, so far, under this webinar series, the university has organized 39 webinars on the topic since 18th August 2021. The titles are The Role of Agribusiness, Ag Agricultural Cooperative Societies, and E Governance. Role of Agricultural Cooperative Societies and E Governance, Blockchain Technology Based Fishery Value Chain. A self-contained village a felt need of the day, spices informatics network value chain, land and a camera, a camouflaged treasure trout, smart hill agriculture, a digitalized hill agriculture value system, Mara Mobile, Mara Marketing, Integrated Mariculture, Aquaponics, and Precision Agriculture, in short, MAPA Biofarms for Income Revolution, Smart Tribal Agriculture Optimizing Value Chain. Digital Agri Tech and Industry Perspective, Land Resources Information System in India, Present and Road Ahead, Weather Decision Technologies for Increasing Farm Income, Big Data in Smart Farming, Sustainable Soil and Land Management for cli Climate Smart Agriculture, Understanding Market Dynamics for Increasing Farm Income, Role of Technologies in Mitigating Crop Risk, How to Generate Additional Profit via Simple, Attractive Approaches in farm produce adoption of flexi rubber check, check dam technology <clears throat> technology you know and potential benefit for farmers in rainfed and coastal agro ecosystems realizing the economic benefits of agroforestry across all organic humic solutions for increasing crop yields and quality while increasing farm income and improving soil health, closing the nutrient loop, phosphorus management in protein farming, artificial intelligence enabled pest management technology for agriculture crop protection without chemical, without pesticides, empowering farmers through extension and knowledge dissemination, role of mass media, smart poultry monitoring solutions, Agro-biodiversity, intellectual property laws, agriculture and farmer welfare, and insight into the issues for India's agrarian economy. <clears throat> Manufacture and application of biochars for increased soil fertility and crop productivity. Sustainable integration of livestock with agriculture for farm income increase. 
role of geographical indications on improving farmers income lessons from asia pacific region dairy informatics <laughs> network value chain a dairy tech startup perspective for farmers income increase spices informatics network value chain a turmeric startup perspective for farmers income increase generating sustainable on farm income through fintech interventions nutrition sensitive agriculture pathway for increasing farmers income artificial intelligence and data analytics to ensure optimal nutrition in the soil harvested food that minimizes human disease bioenergy supply chain a business opportunity for rural enterprises and farmer producer organizations tech enabling india's tech starved farmers for manifold increase in productivity and income open insurance ecosystem for agriculture producers risk management solutions to overcome repercussions on farmers income market stability and food safety role of mass media for farmers income increase a case study from green tv at stack agriculture stack open source digital infrastructure for the agriculture ecosystem a linux foundation project circular bioeconomy towards resilience urgent need for redefining raw materials and modified waste management policies and regulations today is the 40th edition of this national webinar series which will be addressed by mr dinesh shah co founder and managing director omnivore a leading agri tech venture capital mumbai state of maharashtra on a very important topic agri tech new horizon in indian agriculture dear participants you please see the keywords in this title agri tech new horizon and in indian agriculture i decide to inform the speakers and the speaker and the participants the university has organized the following webinars in number 20 related to agriculture agri tech and deep tech startups a self contained village a felt need of the day on 23rd september 2020 a talk on blockchain technology based fishery value chain on 3rd december 2020 a talk on digital agri tech an industry perspective on 17th december 2020 a talk on digital agri tech an industry perspective on 17th december 2020 a talk on weather decision technologies for increasing farm income on 24th december a talk on big data in smart farming on 14th january 2021 role of technologies in mitigating crop risk on 25th february a talk on artificial intelligence enabled pest management technology for agriculture crop protection without pesticides on 11th of march 2021 smart poultry monitoring solutions on 27th of may 2021 a talk on dairy informatics network value chain a dairy tech startup perspective for farmers income increase on 3rd june 2021 talk on spices informatics network value chain a turmeric startup perspective for farmers income increase on 24th june 2021 talk on artificial intelligence and data analytics to ensure optimal nutrition in the soil harvested food that minimizes human disease on 8th july 2021 a talk on tech enabling india's tough star of the farmer for manifold increase in productivity and income on 15th july 21 a talk on open insurance ecosystem for agriculture producers risk management solution to overcome repercussions on farmers income market stability and food safety and 29th july 2021 talk on agriculture statistics uh, stack open source digital infrastructure international on um, international webinar series on open source digital technologies towards self reliant india on december 12th december 2020 a talk on ensuring food safety and compliance with <coughs> technology on 30th january digital agri tech agri startup perspective on 13th february talk on leveraging emerging technology for ensuring transparent and traceable agri and food supply chain on 12th june open source gov tech startup empowering growth with automation on 7th august indian startups reflections and policy possible policy interventions needed for setting up setting up to gram panchayat agriculture sector is a foundation of indian economy 
It employs more than 50% of the Indian workforce and contributes to almost 17 to 18% yeah. of its GDP. Climate change has both the direct and indirect effect, effects on agricultural productivity, including changing rainfall patterns, severe drought, flooding, and changes in the geographical redistribution of pests and the diseases. Indian farming community comprises of about 14 crores operational holding. Of which 85% of the farmers have small and marginal size operational holding. Farmer needs timely, location specific, and personalized information for effective control on their production, risk, and then market their produce to identified market opportunities. Many national level programs, Digital India, Make in India, Skill India, Startup India, and Stand Up India have faced operational difficulties for its impact at farm level and farmer level and that too at small and marginal farmers. Reforms towards digitalization of agricultural systems. The volume 12B of the doubling farmers income by 2022 have suggested reforms measures for income rise through digitalization of farming sector. Volume, you know, they are seven mission mode projects which they have suggested and i was the chairman of that subgroup on volume 12b of digital technology in agriculture the seven mission mode projects are digitalized agriculture this digital technology and innovation in agriculture digital india make in india skill india and startup india programs for transformational reforms in agriculture sector in three categories smart irrigated farming smart rainfall farming and smart tribal farming. Digitalized agro-met advisories and agricultural risk management solutions. Digitalized agricultural resources information system and micro-level planning for achieving smart village and smart farming. Digitalized value chain for about 400 agriculture commodities. Digitalized access to inputs, technology, knowledge, skill, agricultural finance, credit, marketing, and agribusiness management to farmers. Digitalized integrated land and water management for a drop more crop and digitalized farm health management for reduction of farmers loss to have an integrated approach on farm health management, including farmer health, animal health, soil health, water health and uh, fisheries health. And there are three farm acts, 20, you know, uh, were enacted during 2020. They were they were game changer. And my assertion is that with the seven mission mode project as recommended by the doubling farmers income by 2022 which i read it just now and also these three farm acts enacted by the union government can result in at least one agri tech deep tech startup in every gram panchayat resulting in 2.25 lakhs startups at the grassroots level to help 14 crore operational holdings in the country plus livestock economy and fisheries economy center's committee on doubling farmers income has recommended boosting digital initiative and also government of india has announced to india's digital ecosystem of agriculture and also an agriculture stack called agri stack the agri stack is a collection of technology based intervention in the farming and agriculture sector that hold the potential to result in dramatic changes. Agristec can enable financing for small and marginal farmers and it is dubbed as UPA for Agritech according to the publications from the Government of India, Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. And there is a project of Linux Foundation which is a global initiative that is called Agstack. It is a digital software infrastructure for accelerated adoption of digital applications data and technologies in food and agriculture value chain and agriculture and food sector is one such large sector supporting half of the global population which has been left out of receiving benefits of digitalization global agricultural ecosystem needs a digital transformation to sustainably serve the needs of the 21st century according to the press release of the linux foundations this extract project a digital infrastructure is necessary to catalyze application that bring efficiency and enable scaling. 
we have atmanirbhar bharat the road ahead it is the vision of our honorable prime minister of india narendra modi of making india a self reliant nation rested on five eyes intent inclusion investment infrastructure and innovation and based on five pillars economy quantum jump in the economy infrastructure that one represents modern india system 21st century technology driven vibrant demography and the demand where whereby the strength of our demand and our supply chain should be utilized to full capacity vocal for local and make in india for global and atmanirbhar bharat in agriculture in its um, it, this is the third trench of atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan in under which agriculture sector got about 1.5 lakh crore booster empowering farmers through the you know under which the indian farmers india will go from data poor to data rich nation in 5 years agri tech new horizon in indians agriculture india will go from data poor to data rich nations in 5 years allowing data driven decisions making for scale and inclusion agriculture is a sector heavily regulated by the government largely traditional with little or no exposure to digital and mostly unpredictable due to its heavy dependence on climatic conditions was not on the venture capital radar for quite some time what has made agri tech the sunrise sector that is that it is today it could be of combination of reasons one of which is the modi led government the modi led government's agri push focused on doubling farmers income and the other and the more pronounced reason is the overall ecosystem evolution startup india ecosystem according to the website of the startupindia.gov.in india is the third largest startup ecosystem in the world expected to witness year on year growth of consistent annual growth of 12 to 15 percent according to the it the website it has a has got about 50000 startups in india in around 2018 and the pace of growth in the startup ecosystem has increased to 15 percent year on year in 2018 and while the growth of numbers of incubators and accelerators has grown to 11 percent startups in the country have been able to create an estimated 40000 new lab jobs over the year taking the total jobs in the startup ecosystem to 1.56 to 1.7 lakh so far drivers of startups ecosystems corporate connect government support and over 26 states have in the country have startup policies startup founders venture capitalists have recently written to our honorable prime minister sri narendra modi on direct overseas listing of indian companies dated 6th august 2021 as reported by the newspaper economic times under which they say the current inability of unlisted companies to tap international markets for raising capital is an impediment to growth and most indian startups do not have a level playing field with their foreign counterparts it also led to migration of startups outside india are mm-hmm. flipping valuation of sectors like software as a service or insure tech would be more abroad what might work for a consumer company here that is in india might be different for another sector focused startup uh, a sector another sector focused startup agriculture agri tech in india emerging trends in 2020 according to the report from nasca from their website nascam.in they say that emerging business opportunities in agri tech under five under five categories market linkages digital agriculture better access to inputs farming as a solution and financing in its 2019 report nascam estimated that there are about more than 450 agri tech startups in the country and funding has shot up 300% in the sector the doubling farmers income by 2022 mission mode program titled digitalized value chain for about 400 agriculture commodities may facilitate formation of more than 6500 agri startups one per block 
or even about 2.25 lakh agri startups one per each gram panchayat which can ease which can ease out supply side lock in logistic of the agricultural value system farm extension 4.0 which has got very important 12 categories which the government in india has not realized at the ground grassroots level this itself will can facilitate core agri tech tech stop startup to provide extension services under the, cat, the, the title farm extension 4.0 in short agri tech startup 7 mission mode program of this, uh, doubling farmers income by 2022 report 2018 and the three farm acts 2021 can facilitate 2.25 lakh agri tech startups at the gram panchayat level and agriculture cooperative societies and e governance can start themselves convert themselves into more than 1.5 lakh agri tech startups in cooperative sector google for startups accelerator sustainable development goals is a 3 to 5 months program for startup companies working on products and services that advance one or more of the united nations sustainable development goals in order to promote agri startups with a view to attracting building entrepreneurs to the farming sector and boost exports supporting the pm's vision of doubling agri exports indian chamber of food and agriculture has launched its thousands agri export startup programs in february 2021 the ministry of micro small and medium enterprises has been working since 2021 on the agro msme policy for nurturing entrepreneurship in rural tribal and agricultural and forest areas according to the honorable then union minister in nathan kadri on 4th may 2020 2020 agri entrepreneurship seems to have emerged emerged as a sunrise sector in the post covid phase offering opportunities in agriculture and allied sector agri tech is a value innovation as agriculture and india has a unique bond startup agri india agri tech is a value innovation as agriculture and india has a unique bond total agri india the centers of excellence center for agricultural informatics and e-governance research studies center for agri business and disaster management studies center for informatics development solutions and applications and center for industry 4.0 technology studies and applications and center for in health informatics and computing of the university promotes startup agri india through in its two weekly webinar series national webinar series and doubling farmers income by 2022 and international webinar series on open source digital technologies towards self reliant india the university has so far completed 76 editions i wish to quote from the proceedings of the national webinar on post to covid sustainable uttar pradesh 2025 hosted by Soviet Deemed University Meerut and I am Lucknow there are you know recommendations and uh, discussions related to incubators and accelerators located in IITs IIMs central universities and university having startups located in incubation center and accelerator of higher education institution was all right but there was a necessity to have a public policy in place to network startups in agriculture sector or or at the panchayat level to the higher educational institutions incubator center or accelerator center as of today facilitating such startups located outside incubation center or accelerators of ngos or higher education institution has been very restrictive in nature recommendations related to agri startups and entrepreneurs establish a startup in the area of food processing and animal husbandry by adopting management methods to facilitate both farmer and consumer as the job available in villages or related to food as job availability in villages or related to food processing and animal husbandry sector agri msme promotion of msme economically fruitful in villages facilitate and honest to join with ideas and the university institution 
to provide required platform and the tools include research to translate their ideas into solutions and products for implementation krishi vigyan kendra as mentor institution for startups networking with accredited universities and other research institution for transferring developed technology to farmer through access for accessing through mobile phone need for tie up by the startups with the technology companies necessary to have a public policy on incubators public accelerators to network startups in agriculture sector at panchayat level to higher education institutions there are also very successful top agritech startups in india helping farmers and recently that is on 15th july 2021 there is an article written by mr sayanthan bera on the title the hope or hype behind india's agritech boom with the finding with the funding tap opening up an agritech startup unicorn is no longer a distant dream he claims with the funding tap opening up an agri startup unicorn is no longer a distant dream but will farmers benefit there is however another side to the bus and excitement few investors claim that most of funds flow into a handful of pl- platforms while product led innovations are starved of capital according to hintrice foundation agritech startups are at present capable to address intrinsic challenges of indian agriculture happening from the starting and happening from the starting and are now able to offer right techniques information and efficiencies to small scale farmers exclusively for pre harvest operations and the post harvest use cases what will happen during the production stage that is is very important and we must ensure that indian farmer benefits from all these tech developments right up front i entars the five year centers of excellence of the university are focused on this core issue let let us now return to the address by mr jinesh jam sine jinesh shah co-founder and managing director omnivore a leading agri tech venture capital mumbai on the very important topic agri tech new horizon in indian agriculture according to the synopsis of the guest speaker 80% of the agri startups use digital technologies as a part of their core offering small holder small holder farmers are critically important for global food supply digital interventions are critical for doubling farmers income the pandemic contributed to new business models gaining importance and for farmers technology is a tool for augmenting incomes let me invite our guest speaker to address the participants before that let me introduce our guest speaker mr jinesh shah to the participants just one mr jinesh shah is the co-founder and managing partner omnivore a leading agri tech venture capital mumbai state of maharashtra he has co-founded omnivore with mark khan in 2011 10 omnivore is a venture capital firm based in india which funds entrepreneurs building the future of agriculture and food systems omnivore pioneered agri tech investing in india packing backing over 20 startups since 2011 and currently manages indian rupee 9.3 9.35 billion approximately dollar 130 million across two funds every day omnivore portfolio companies drive agriculture prosperity and transform food systems across india making farming more profitable resilient and sustainable previously Mr Ganesh was vice president and CFO at Nexus Venture Partners one of India's leading venture capital funds earlier in his career Ganesh worked in corporate finance roles for Datamatics Patani Computers and Hexel Technologies he is a member of IMC Chamber of Commerce and Industries Agriculture and Food Processing Committee 
He is the executive committee member of Impact Investors Council and is also involved in World, World Economic Forum's working group focused on agriculture. Dinesh is a chartered accountant with a BCom from RA Padar College and an, 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 an MMS Finance from Jamlal, Jamnalal Bajaj Institute of Management Studies, Department of Management Studies, University of Mumbai. Very good morning, Mr. Dinesh Shah. We welcome you to the national webinar series on doubling formats income by 2022, Atmanirbar Bharat in agriculture. On the topic, Agri-Tech, New Horizon in an Agriculture. Thank you very much. Over to you for your address, Mr. Dinesh Shah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Professor. Uh, thank you, Shafiq University, for giving me an opportunity to speak at this forum. Uh, and thank you, listeners, uh, to spend some time in the morning uh, to listen to what I have to say. Uh, I mean, can you have the presentation, please? I mean, my, I, I, I'm going to speak about what an agri is, right? Professor has mentioned about all the great initiatives done by the government of various various private sector, uh, and and trying to figure out what what Indian agri is going to look the next few years, right? So. I'm going to speak about the agriculture, how we look around it, how as an investor in the agri-tech space uh, looks at the agri-sector, what are the initiatives taken by us, uh, and what are some case studies where we have been able to see some scale uh, in the sector, right? I mean, fortunately, unfortunately, agriculture is everyone's baby in India, right? Right from the government to private sector to academics to the, the civil societies and to even a common people right agriculture is uh, is is everyone's baby and everyone has an opinion about 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 the sector what the problems of the sector are uh, how it needs to be tackled but unfortunately for the last stride from independence and before independence also our agriculture sector has been in shambles right and it's not easy to come out of that crisis uh, what we have today. I mean, at Omni, we are trying to make an attempt to see how we can contribute. While we never claim that we know everything about agri sector, but there are some initiatives taken by us, some investments done by us, which probably is, is helping the sector uh, uh, on the same. Uh, Manish, can I have the presentation, please? Or uh, you want me to share it myself? Oh, perfect. Great. Thank you, Manish. Uh, now I'm going to talk about the new horizons in Indian agriculture and the agri-tech. I mean, how we look at it, right? Uh, uh, I mean, I, I might be having a different view of what the government's government has it or what what people people generally think around it. Uh, and that is how we, but this is how we look around it. I mean, a simple example about how we have a different view. Uh, I mean, when anyone talks to about the problems of Indian agriculture, right from common man to the government, the reason they would say that our land holdings are small and as a result, our productivity and yield is low, right? But we have two clear examples. I mean, our neighbor on the north, China, and the land holding is exactly, average land holding is exactly half of ours. But the yield is probably at least 70, 80% higher than ours, or maybe more than that, right? And the neighbor on the west, Pakistan, which was created for the feudal lords by the feudal lord, uh, has an average land holding maybe which is 50, 100 times higher than ours. But the yield and productivity is lower than uh, India's yield, uh, yield and productivity by at least 40 50 percentage. So this is how we we we, we think in India, uh, uh, how everyone has a view about agriculture, but very, very few people have, have taken initiatives about how what, what can be done about the sector. Uh, can you hear the next slide, please? I mean, I'm going to talk about the landscape. I mean, I'm not going to teach about what the or climatic zones are, what agriculture zones are, how much production we do about it. I'm going to talk to you a broad overview of how agriculture as investors we look around it. Uh, I mean, I'm not, not claiming that I know everything, but from the investor's perspective, uh, this is how we look and maybe people might agree or disagree, but the intention is that we look agriculture in a very different manner than what the government or the civil sector uh, looks around it. Uh, can you have the next slide, please? I mean, I mean, from our perspective, India is at an inflection point in the agri-tech sector, right? I mean, we had, I mean, Omni was started in 2012, making the first investments. Uh, 
But the real game change happened in agriculture over the last seven, eight years, right? I mean, Indian VCs had been investing a lot of money in the early part of the 2000 of the previous decade. And in 2014-15, they saw there was a saturation of, of fund in funding in the in the sectors what they like, right? In the urban B2C play, e-commerce companies, e-grosses, where the the investments did not span out the way they, they really wanted to span out. So, I mean, like any other investor, they would want to look at different sectors so that they can diversify the risk. And as a result, they started looking at B2B opportunities in, in, in general sectors, in SME, SME, SME lending. And, and, and Agritech was a beneficiary of the same, right? I don't think there was an intention by anyone to really focus on Agritech at those times, right? Uh, but then something really game changing happened, right? I mean, Geo was launched, Geo's data was available across the rural part of India in, a, in an awesome manner, right? I mean, uh, I mean, as a result, the farmers, which never had any data or data with a very poor connectivity, got got a completely different game-changing thing, right? And as a result, we saw a increased usage of digitization or attempt to do digitization with the world India started in that part, right? That was part of the, uh, the when Geo was launched, and <clears throat> and this led to various models, digitization of agriculture. Uh, various investment opportunities which were not present uh, before that. I mean, case in example, when I look at my fund at Omnivore, right, the, the first fund we used to, we didn't have the benefit of digitization, we didn't have the benefit of the data availability what we have today. So we we used to focus on making investment in product companies, trying to solve, solve specific problems, but we were not able to solve the network problems uh, and not able to solve the platform problem. So we ended up making lots of product companies and few of them have done very well, right? But after the digitization story, which began like after the geos entering the Indian market, uh, things started looking better. We started looking at markets, market platforms, we started looking at B2B things, how, how information can be exchanged and how, how things can move forward. And so that led to the business to farmer models or business to business to farmer models. And that's how things started looking, getting better and better. And as a result, what we saw that a lot of startups, I mean, which were far and few in early part of the last decade, uh, started increasing the number, good quality of entrepreneurs started coming in. And we, are, we started seeing quite a few generous VCs taking bets, uh, impact funds looking at agri-sector. And that's the time that they saw there's a huge opportunity in the agri-tech sector, right? I mean, case in example, I mean, I mean, early part of the last decade, I mean, we had like maybe 100 odd startups, which we can count in the hands. And today, probably we have more than 1,000 agri-tech startups today. I mean, we also used to joke internally within Omnivore that we were not investors. We were like hunters, right? To make investments in agri-sector, we used to go every part of the country, figure out there's a good startup and make an investment. So we were trying to find out that startup where we can invest, right? But today, it has reached to a stage that there's abundance of startup already. I mean, our pipeline is extremely full. We get at least two or three uh, emails about potential investment opportunities in our email box, in our team, team's email box. And we and that's that's very exciting, right? We are seeing more and more people looking at the agri-tech sector and see what can they be done around it. Uh, so good thing about is about this trend is that whenever we have a risk capital available and whenever the young talent of India, which used to, focus on the non-rural India, start to look at this, I'm sure, I believe there's a lot of positivity that things will move forward and we'll see a momentum which will help the country and the rural sector as a whole. Uh, can you have the next slide, Manish, please? <clears throat> I mean, this is what was what I was trying to tell you, right? I mean, we are now seeing that most of the agri-startups today have digital technology as part of the core offering they that's the basis of it right i mean we are not trying to innovate agriculture what we are trying to is currently trying to remove the inefficiency remove the problems what we have in the agri sector and see what can be done and good thing about from an investor's perspective there is, is that there's so much of inefficiency in the agri tech sector today that if i pick up any piece of the value chain and if i try to re and if i remove the inefficiencies in the same there's a value created which can be shared among every stakeholder, including the farmers. And that's that's something very exciting, right? From an investor's perspective, 
that if I can solve the problem, I can, I can really help the smallest, the poorest stakeholder, which is a farmer. At the same time, I get a chance to make my companies big and scale up and make money for myself. Uh, I mean, at Omnivore, what we do, we, we really believe in a theory of change in that whatever Omnivore does needs to fall in one of the pillars of change. I mean, these are the four we identified. So whatever Omnivore does should make increase the profit of the smallholder farmers, right? We are saying profits. We are not saying yield. We are not saying productivity. We are not saying the prices. I mean, I don't care if the yield goes down or the prices goes up or down. As long as the farmer's profits are growing up, it, it, it is what we will invest, right? And the profits can be come by getting higher price realization or lower costing or changing the way how agriculture practices are adopted around it. And the second, what we, the pillar of the theory of change we have is was improving, improved agriculture sustainability. I mean, we've been using our natural resources without any, any, any discipline, right? I mean, we have been destroying the water tables. We are putting more and more farm inputs than what is required. And, and it's just creating a situation that our agriculture productivity is getting impacted, right? I mean, over abusive usage of fertilizers, chemical fertilizers, over drainage of groundwater from the, in few parts of the country. That's, that's, that's not going to really help, right? So we really focus on improving the ag agri sustainability. Uh, <clears throat> the third important pillar is about resilience, right? For anyone, uh, it's not about how, how, how good or bad the sector is, about how resilient the sector is. I mean, example, right? For an employee, it is very comfortable to know that on the first of the next month, he's going to get his salary and he can plan his expenses every time. In agriculture, there is no steady income for farmers. You have one good monsoon, you have two bad, bad monsoons, right? Your yields are up and down. Your, your income levels <coughs> of farmers keep on going on yo-yo basis, right? So as a result, he's unable to plan his, his life, right? So he ends up he ends up spending a lot of money into areas or on, on, on taking loans from money lenders or some other informal sources. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, sorry, please go to your previous slides, I'm sure. And the fourth is what we are talking about. The fourth is a climate action, right? Uh, Indian, Indian agriculture is a part of the problem of climate and, and also if you're not able to resolve the climate situation, then Indian agriculture will also be a major, uh, taking a major hit because of the same, right? Uh, we are trying to figure out how we can mitigate the GHG emissions, uh, re reducing the usage of water or groundwater, and how, at the same time, how can we make agri more sustainable and profitable for the farmers? I mean, these are conflicting uh, uh, questions we have to answer, but that's an attempt from our side. Uh, Manish, can you go to the next slide, please? <coughs> yeah, was next slide, I mean. Manish, yeah. So, I mean, look, we, we all talk about agriculture, right? But broadly, if I look at the few basic problems and uh, from, from a common man's perspective, there are three areas where there is a problem, right? One is at the pre-production stage. I mean, we have structural flaws in agriculture. I mean, we have land holdings which are small, uh, uneven, the titles are not clear. I mean, who is the owner, who is the farmer is all debatable. We have a situation where the soil quality is going down because of abusive usage of chemical fertilizers and monocultures in few states, like I mean, state of Punjab, Haryana, we've been going paddy and wheat for, for ages because of the MSP what they have. And the soil's quality has deteriorated to an extent beyond repair, right? I mean, if, if people don't change there in the next 10 years, we will not be able to do agriculture in that part of the country. Uh, third is that we just don't have enough market awareness of what crops we need to select or what is the best way of inputs, so right? A farmer will generally look at the last year's prices and whatever prices was higher, they will try to do the crop, uh, uh, produce that crop, right? But what really happens is that it's a herd mentality. I mean, everyone starts growing the same crop at the same time. And what really happens is, is simple, right? It's like, it's like market economics. I mean, if the demand is high, then the prices will rise. If the supply is very high, then the, as compared to demand, the prices will drop. So we always keep on shifting situation that based on last year's prices, we try to make a production this year. Uh, and as a result, price drops. So this is basic pre-production problems we have. It. 
in production problem is equally painful, right? We just don't have enough mechanization. We have what is tractorization. Uh, I don't know why, uh, in how, in what logical way that Indians started buying so many tractors. I mean, tractors really made sense for, for countries like US or Europe where the land holdings are a few hundred acres on an average. In India's, in India's case, we have average land holding of 1.4 hectares or something, right? I mean, and using a tractor on a, such a small piece of land, I mean, it really doesn't make economic sense, right? At the same time, because of because of the same uh, uh, because of the same, we are not able to do enough mechanization because most of the investments of the farmers is happens on the tractors. So that's that's something we have issue. Other issue is is a is a labor force, right? I mean, no one no son and daughters of farmers want to become farmers themselves. Uh, it's just very painful, right? Because everyone who looks, I mean, if you take an Indian context, right? Farmers really don't get respect for what they really deserve around it. I mean, they they don't get they don't get the pricing, they don't get a lifestyle what the non non farmers are getting in the urban cities, and as a result, because of that, people want to move out of it, right? And so the skilled labor ability in Indian agriculture is getting lower by the day, right? And we and the other piece is the lack of adequate farm infrastructure. We don't have enough irrigation uh, abilities. Across the country, less than 40, 45 percent of land holding in this country is irrigated. I mean, so if it's not irrigated, then you end up flood irrigation. You end up spending more, more chemicals, more, more inputs, and still not get the desired outputs. So this is the production issue, and then the post-production. Uh, it's it's really very really, it's it's frightening sometimes that we just did not think through it. Right, the policymakers did not think about how to how to really do solve the post-production issues. I mean, we just don't have enough marketing efforts done for what we produce. I mean, India is leader of ag in most of the agri, agri produce across the world, but we just don't do enough food processing, right? I mean, our food processing on an average is two or three percentage for quite a fruits and vegetables, right? Globally, that average is like 30, 40 percentage. So even if we can do that job and make it 20 percent of the food what we produce as processed, it will reduce the problem of wastage. It will increase the chance of farmers making more money and help the sector. We don't have enough storage facilities and proper transportation facilities. I mean, yes, we have claims that uh, we haven't heard the stories about that warehouses in this country are full, rice and wheat are lying outside the go-downs. I mean, we heard those horrifying stories. It's a fact, right? As a result, we lose, end up losing our produce after after producing after after the production itself, right? So no one benefits. Neither the farmer benefits nor the customer benefits. Only only someone else who is inefficiently storing the produce makes makes money there, right? And the last thing, which is equally critical, right, is is the absence of quality standards. I mean, we don't have any assessment tools. I mean, it is said that we have one agri lab for every 100,000 farmers or 125,000 farmers. I don't know how quality can be assessed around it. And as a result, since there is no standard, there is no trust between the buyers and sellers of the agri-produce. And as a result, there is so much inefficiency that's not even a joke on the same. Uh, I mean, case an example, right? I mean, when I go to a stock market today to buy any, any stocks, I mean, I'm very comfortable because I know if I'm buying Infosys shares, I know what am I getting and what, what the seller is giving it to me. But if I'm buying a, a wheat, let's say 10 tons of wheat, I'm not sure of the quality of the wheat, right? So as a result, if I'm a buyer, I will always assume that the seller is some, some, some guy who's trying to make, make money out of me. So I'll always end up paying him lesser price or at least always attempt to do that. And the seller also is not sure whether he's going to get the right price, the farmer. So he ends up doing something different uh, than what, what, general practice should be and he he doesn't have a trust on the buyer himself right because there is no clarity on the quality so these are basic problems of this sector uh i mean manish can the next slide please so <clears throat> i mean we've all been talking about doubling farmers income right i mean some basic facts we agriculture sector uses 85 percent of fresh water resources I mean, so that's that's something which we have to look into it. It contributes 20% of the GHG emissions in the country, which is which for the sector is, is going to be disaster. Climate is 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 a big problem. 
and the sector ends up using 60% of the total land. So these are three important factors which you all need to consider and say how best can we optimize the usage of it. And in spite of all this, we have issues of low yield and productivity. Our yield and productivity are probably like one third of the global standards. Right? I mean, it's just we are nowhere close to it. Our farm infrastructure is absolutely absible, right? I mean, they, there's not enough support for mechanization. There's not enough support for storage. I mean, and as a result, we, we, we sometimes say it was one third of the food what we produce gets wasted. And it's ironical that one, one fourth of my countrymen are not able to get three square meals a day. And we end up wasting so much of food and food what we produce. I mean, it's just a problem of matching up what we're doing now. Uh, other, and we don't have access to credit. I mean, everyone talks about private sector lending. Everyone talks about giving so much money. I mean, at least in the last five, six years with the DBT scheme, at least the farmers are getting some money into the bank's account. Otherwise, the farmers were not having any formal access to the credit in this country. And the last thing, which is more of a marketing problem, uh, we just don't do enough value addition to our produce. We just don't market our produce well. I mean, as a result, the availability or the realization of what we can get of per kg of production we do is much lower as compared to any part of the world, right? So even if we can increase the processing ability and make from existing two, three percentage to maybe 20 percentage, I mean, you are going to see at least a 5x increase in GDP amount what we have it. Uh, next slide, Manish, please. So I'm going to give you an example about a few of my companies. I'm going to throw some examples, right? I'll, I'll talk about one of my portfolio company, Arya. <clears throat> Arya is a warehousing platform, which is uh, India's largest private sector warehousing platform post uh, trying to, in the non-perishable space, right? They they own around, they, they manage around 2000 plus kind of warehouses in around around, around the country. Uh, we we help farmers to uh, get loans from the NBFCs. I mean, work with banks and NBFCs at much lesser interest rate than what we get otherwise. And this loan is is given against the crops what the farmers produce. And we also do market linkages uh, to help the farmer get the right price for what we can about what, what they are producing. It. So that's the attempt what we're doing. It. I mean, the problem what we are solving is that we lose so much of grains every year because of the storage issues, right? And that is, is really painful when 25% of countrymen are not getting enough food for the day or enough nutrition food in the, in the uh, uh, every day. Uh, at the same time, we just don't have enough storage facilities. We just don't know what we can do about the post harvest liquidity because what really happens when there is a season, right? When you are producing and, uh, and it's simple economics also, right? When the curry for the Ravi production comes out, the product, the supply is huge, right? And the, there is no one in the country who can buy out, match the, get all the food, can, can demand for all the food, right? So as a result, the prices of the produce starts going down. If we had enough storage, if we had enough facility to do to, to food processing around the same, then we could match the supply and the demand and hopefully get a realized right price realization for the same. And over and above that, right, I mean, Indian farmers really don't get credit access from banks, right? I mean, banks keep on saying that we're doing a lot of PSL lending, but no bank really wants to lend to a small farmer who really needs that loan. They will end up creating a PSL book for the sake of creating a PSL book, right? And as a result, the farmer who needs a loan is not getting it. <clears throat> and he ends up taking loans because he has to prepare for the next crop season from an informal source, which has very, very painful interest rates. So what is Arya doing? I mean, Arya is trying to creating a platform of warehouses. Currently we have more than a million tons of capacity, what we have it. So probably between the two crop seasons, we can store around two, two and a half million uh, tons of food produce. Uh, <clears throat> we act as a custodian of that food. We are not, not taking decisions that we're not going to take over the food. So we, and in against the crop, we, we provide loans to farmers at much lower interest rates <clears throat> and which in turn the farmers can repay if directly by because Arya can also help them to sell the food produce. And the, so farmers are able to recover the money and pay off the interest and the loan to Arya. 
and still make better margins than what they could ever do in the past so this is a simple what simple and logical thing what anyone should have done it uh, unfortunately not many players could do it and arya is doing the same so this is what we are solving the post harvest value chain uh, next slide please i mean i'm going to talk about the climate crisis i mean it's it's something very painful but uh, very important i mean next slide please manish yeah, thanks sir <clears throat> i mean we i mean the world had come, I mean, the ipcc has come out with the climate vulnerability index right and we are we have the potential being the fifth i mean fifth highest impact negative impact we could have because of climate change right uh, <clears throat> i mean we are seeing a significant amount of losses in terms of 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 economic losses at the same same time the life the human life loss right because of the change in the climate patterns we have it because of the extreme weather whether it's heat or cold or monsoons or or, or water right we <clears throat> have a situation that we are 130 or 140 million small farmers who have very limited capacity to adapt to climate change at the same time they have no incentive to make the reduce the carbon footprint right and they are contributing to the problem per se right but i don't think there is any incentive for them to not to do that so i don't know what to do the third is that we don't have enough irrigation across the country less than half of our crop is irrigated we are using either flood irrigation or we are using excessive ground water for doing our crop production so fourth major concern is that we our farmers the main stakeholders who are going to get impacted they have very low income levels i mean they just needs they just are not able to think beyond their daily existence right and i don't i don't blame them for that the last point is that we just have very limited post harvest infrastructure we don't have enough cold storages we don't have enough warehouses and whatever we have seems to be planned in an unplanned manner right i mean it's it's sometimes ironical what really india does it so broad horizon like so i mean give you a snap or a snapshot around it india makes all the food production in the rural indias right but because of where our infrastructure is right whether it's warehouses or or financing schemes the entire produce goes to the urban centers where you get all the facilities right so you this entire food moves from 100% food moves from rural india to urban india then what we realize is that 40% or 30% of consumption happens in urban centers and 70% happens in the rural centers so 70% of food which had gone from rural to urban india now comes back to rural india for consumption purposes so what we are doing in agriculture sector is transporting the food from rural to urban and urban to rural if we had thought slightly differently in a more better manner in a decentralized manner a lot of wastages of carbon footprint could go down right it's not a rocket science but we just did not do it right yeah next slide please so indian agriculture is part of the problem and part of the solution 20% of carbon problems in this country is contributed by agriculture sector and that sometimes is very very painful because that sector is going to get maximum impacted if we are not able to manage the same <clears throat> and what does that mean to our food systems we are if the climate change is for real and i think it is for real we will see yields falling from what today are right we could see at least 10% drop in the yields what india has it and who's going to get maximum impact at the poor the marginal farmers are going to get maximum impact in around it what we the climate condition means that farm agriculture operations which is being done in the outdoors will have to be done into very harsh environment extreme cold or extreme heat or extreme i mean drought or extreme flood kind of situation and this could mean that the labor availability what we have today will further dwindle down third is we have erratic water flows and increased risk of flooding slash droughts right i mean we have seen that our precipitation levels have not gone down but the amount of the intensity of monsoons has increased but the duration of monsoons have become lesser and lesser so that something is very painful and it's not that this problem can be solved 
The problem is that our poor farmers are not able to have any support to resolve or adapt to this. And this is also going to have a population impact, right? We, it's going to talk about food security, uh, excess, and and probably, uh, I mean, it's going to make a major impact on the national level, right? Yeah, so next slide, please. Now I also want to talk about the, I mean, I don't have an answer for climate, what, what can be done, right? but this is what the problem is. And this is where we think there's a cha uh, challenge and opportunity as well. Well, let's talk about the pandemic, what has really happened. Pandemic, I mean, next slide is, pandemic has not been bad for the agri-sector. Uh, yeah. So what really happened? I mean, this, this pandemic really threw a lot of challenges at the agri-sector. But I think for the first time, I think the sector really used these challenges for as an opportunity, right? We, due to lockdown, the traditional systems of the of agri value chain just fell down. I mean, there was disruptions, there was loss of income. What really did right? The farmers and and the startups and the other alternatives started thinking that can what can we do to access the market because the traditional system failed, right? So that led to a lot of B two B platforms and marketplaces for the first time that we are seeing that farmers now directly reaching out to various players to sell the produce. It, up till now, it was only going to an APMC Monday and waiting for others to do the job. But for the first time, we are seeing that farmers are being proactive and this is where lots of platforms and marketplaces are getting benefit of the same. And the other thing was because of pandemic, we all started looking as consumers, how do we improve the quality of our health? And that means how do we improve the quality of food we produce, right? As a result, the consumer started reaching out to the producers directly to the extent possible. And that lead to a lot of direct to consumer kind of marketing, which was not existence, not existing before this. So this is something which with the agri, agri businesses are now seeing the benefit. I mean, we saw a migration of labor from the agri rich states, the, farm, the workers who used to be working in the agriculture rich states, they had to go back to their hometowns, right? I mean, we saw an exodus of population from state of Maharashtra, Gujarat, Punjab, Haryana, back to UP, Bihar, MP, Orissa. And what really happened in the states which are very high on the agri 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 agriculture sector, they didn't have labor. So this has led to an increased need of precision agriculture. And we are seeing increased demand and increased investment by farmers in the agri states. So this is, and I think once there is a benefit which is seen by them, this trend will become irreversible. And, and fourth, I mean, the government has attempted to do some reforms in deregulating markets, making it more market driven, uh, trying to bring new changes. I mean, in some cases, APMs and states, APMCs have been removed. There is no APMCs for the horticulture sector. I mean, this is something very interesting because you're trying to bring the market forces into play. Look, I mean, we, we cannot, and I mean, for some reason, I mean, the, act, the existing acts or the or the controls we had, what was very relevant when India was a food deficient country, right? The Essential Commodities Act and all those acts which are there used to be the case when India was not able to feed itself. I mean, today India is not able is not worried about feeding itself. India can the amount of produce what India India makes today we can use to feed the entire world. I mean, so instead of trying to protect the farmers and say I'm going to control things. Can we help farmers? Can we help them to expand the market? Can we help them to export the produce and get them a better value than what they're getting today? Right? We cannot live in a cocoon when the entire world is moving uh, differently, right? So we will have to do that. And so the first time we are talking, our government is talking about bringing more exports focus, trying to improve the quality. APIDA is working hard to help take Indian produce globally. And this is becoming very, very interesting around it, right? And I don't understand why, I mean, but still we as government, as regulators, sometimes really screw it up, right? I mean, this is one sector where when the demand of price of food or the demand of the produce or the prices of the produce really increase, government will start controlling it. I mean, I don't see government doing in any other sector except agriculture. If the prices of steel commodities goes up, government doesn't say I'll control the price of steel today. I mean, in this case, they'll say, let's stop exports. Let's stop selling to other states. Let's stop doing this. I mean, this is idiotic at, at its best, right? If government could allow the market process to play, I mean, you 
and and at the same time help farmers have a safety net by doing more direct benefit of transfers of the subsidies what they're doing in other way it would really help the farmers get a basic life which is more more in sustainable for them at the same time an opportunity for them to really make more money by working with the market forces i mean and pandemic has really showed that that indian indian agriculture sector can really evolve to the challenges uh I mean, simple example, right? If there is a disruption in the iron or or a metals uh, kind of a, 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 a sector, it takes them few years for the supply chain to revert back or go back to respond to them, right? And we are seeing the case in semiconductor other industry. But in the agriculture sector, let's say if the prices of onion have gone really crazy or the supply of onion has gone down, Indian farmers are so smart. In the next four months, we'll have enough onion to take care of the problems. so our agriculture supply chain and the resilience of the sector is fairly fairly good enough uh, next slide please manish can you take the next slide please perfect so i will also talk here about one of other portfolio companies of ours right <coughs> uh, a company called agritanex which is based out of of a pune <coughs> it's a market linkage platform that directly connects with the farmers to the buyers whether it could be a traders or processors or or consumers directly so <clears throat> what it does it goes to the farm i mean majority of indian farmers are not selling the produce to to, to the to the consumers they go to uh, aratyas the commission agents the mandis the at least 5 or 10 middlemen in the between before the produce reaches to the uh, 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 to the consumers and what really happens is the producer of the of the of the of the of the uh, of the produce is not getting the right price point he probably gets 25 30% of the entire mrp which is paid by the customer <clears throat> and so and this is because there is no absence of there is complete absence of connect between the farmers and the and the consumers so what agritanex does is a simple platform they will go to the farmers and say guys you you tell me when you are ready with your harvest right you don't harvest before i come back with the demand so they really match up the demand and say guys i have now a demand of 10000 tons of onions you are 500 farmers let's together try to see how much can you supply it right and they will tell the farmers when the produce needs to be harvested so that the crop don't get wasted right because in agriculture sector the moment you harvest the crops the quality of crop will always go down that's the law of nature so agritanex has been able to resolve this piece uh, work with farmers directly avoid the middlemen to the extent possible and has been able to pass a significant price increase to the farmers so what it really does also is not only just the direct price increase but it also saves a lot of cost to the thing right i mean a farmer has to take the produce go to a mandi there is a transportation cost there is a loading unloading cost there is a mandi mandi taxes and since it's oligopoly in the mandis i mean the farmers will get a price which is the shittiest price available on that day right and the farmer cannot do anything he will have to sell to the broker at that price point so agri agritanex has been able to resolve this to a large extent and has been able to give farmers a freedom to decide when he wants to sell where he wants to sell and get the price on an immediate basis he doesn't have to wait for any money uh because the the aratyas will give the money after 15 days or 20 days whatever the time is right so that's something what agritanex has been able to do it uh manish next slide please i mean next slide see when we look at agriculture and especially from technology uh we think that technology is not the main thing it's just an enabling factor for helping the sector it's a tool to increase the farmers income <clears throat> and the kind of usage of technology what we have it is directly correlates to the amount of income of what the farmer has it so the more the tech is being used in the agriculture sector the more the income for the farmers would be i mean that's simple 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 correlation there is no complication and <clears throat> when we look at the next decade how how agri tech is going to span out we think there are six areas in which agri tech will span out i mean one we will see more and more farmer platforms and fintech so farmer platform is a, is is a exchange tool where farmers will talk to other farmers will talk to the buyers and and other stakeholders in the sector we will also see an increase usage of b2b marketplaces 
I, I don't see really farmers selling to end consumer directly because of the distances we have it or because of the economies of scale, right? I mean, a farmer on average with two acres of land can produce how much? Few tons, right? So he really cannot go to the consumers directly. So we'll see a lot of B2B marketplaces coming in where there is because of information and the data availability, it will have more transparency and more traceability, which will help farmers to make more money. A third area which is really going to come up is the precision agriculture. I mean, as Sir was mentioning in his opening remarks that it's with the kind of data what is going to crop up in this country. Indian agriculture is going to be more and more data driven, more and decisions will be taken based on data. We will see use of precision agriculture, right? I mean, we will see lots of satellites giving you information. We will see lots of hyperspectral imaging solutions. We will see a lot of uh, uh, soil data, a lot of, lot of in information availability, what we have it, will lead to increased use of uh, precision agriculture in the sector. Mm. One thing what we are excited and which we really like about the agri potential next year, we will see a farmer to consumer brand that is directly take the produce from the farms to the consumers. And that is something very exciting. I mean, we have seen in some cases in some FPOs selling the grapes across to the export in the European markets rather than going via some other Mondays. We will see those, those kind of brands really becoming ours. And I'm going to make a produce and that, that will directly go to consumers and those brands will become more and more hopefully uh, feasible and available for, for all of us. Uh, the other area which is going to see an increased uh, adoption is going to be agri-food life sciences. I mean, we've been talking about solving the agriculture's inefficiencies today, right? But we are missing out that our climate is going to change. So we need to make better seeds, we need to make better fertilizers, we need to make, make <clears throat> real investments in the new technology uh, uh, which will help us to uh, get better yields. At the same time, if the climate changes, we will see a lot of uncertainty. You will see a different kind of pest attack coming. I mean, we've seen the locust attacks in India at increasing rate than what we had in the past. And this is all climate change. So we will have to make a lot of investment in the agri-food life sciences, and this is an important opportunity. And the last, what we're saying is the post-harvest technologies. India is a country with so much of production and so much of demand, right? The biggest challenge is not to produce. The biggest challenge is how do we match it up to the demand and get a better price realization for all the stakeholders. So this is what we think Agri is going to look in the next 10 years. This is, we'll see areas where we see a lot of investment coming in. Uh, next slide, Manish, please. I'm going to talk about one of my portfolio companies, Stella. It's a very interesting prop, uh, company. I mean, it is a full stack dairy solution, dairy IoT company. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, India's dairy supply chain is one of the world's most complicated. We have around 90 million farmers, that's around 9 crore Indian farmers, supplying corn, small quantum of milk every day. At the end of the day, it becomes the world's largest production. That's something very, very interesting, right? No other country has this kind of complication. <clears throat> and because of this situation we have, it, there is no surety of what quality of milk we are getting, right? Because Farmers, up till now, we are getting paid on based on the quantum of the milk and some quality component like SNF or some fat content. But there was no, no punishment if they are putting some kind of chemicals or excess water and destroying the quality of milk, which was not possible. So what Stellas was able to do that is using technology at the collection centers with the working with the farmers, helping cattle, cattle insurance, helping them give them the right feed to the cattle they've been able to improve the quality of the milk. And while they improved the quality of the milk, they went to the dairy process and said, guys, would you be able to pay a higher price for what, the, if there's a better quality of milk? And the dairy companies love this, right? Because a simple math, when you are supplying liquid milk, you get 40 rupees a liter. But if you're processing the milk to a paneer or a koya or a, or a or cheese or something, you get 400, 500 rupees a kg. So the value addition, what you are doing in milk is really phenomenal. And the companies are happy to share their excess, part of the excess profits with the farmers, which incentivize farmers to improve the quality and not, not, not just keep increase the quantum of milk. And, and we have seen in real, real life, right? In some villages where there was collection, the quantum of milk, which was getting collected went down because the farmers stopped putting water into the milk, right? 
but the amount of payout what the farmers got had got increased because the companies were getting better quality of food than what they could, they could do it right now they can get into more better better food processing part which can get them higher income and this is what still happens able to do with around two and a half million farmers and hopefully that number will keep on growing right uh, and dairy if you can solve a problem will solve a significant agri problem dairy represents around five percent of india's gdp there is no crop as big as dairy in the world i think uh, next next slide please uh, this is also one company on our talk they are very interesting company uh, they are <coughs> is 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 a company which is really uh, scaling up in the central india but hopefully the next couple of years will go across the country uh, the biggest challenge for a farmer is, is simple. A farmer has 30 in requirements with the outside world, whether to sell his output or buy, buy inputs or, or get advisory or get loans or anything. This is 30 interactions of his life with the, not, with the outside world. Up till now, a lot of startups, a lot of government used to focus on like, how can I increase the yield? How can I give them subsidies? How can I give them a loan? It was one-on-one -on -one, they're trying to solve a problem a piece of the entire solution they were solving part part i mean two or three out of the 30 problems but from a farmer's perspective all those 30 problems are not resolved he doesn't get the right throughput right even if he doesn't get the right price point so all effort what he had has no no value even if he is able to sell the produce but if he doesn't get paid on time it's no value so unless you solve all those three 30 things together it really doesn't help so Dehat has created Dehat centers. They're present in some 2,000 odd locations right now, working with nearly half a million farmers uh, <clears throat> and, and created Dehat centers. Right? What Dehat center does is help farmers get better inputs, which is more transparent, help farmers to get better credit. At the same time, help farmers sell the produce directly. Right? They help them in writing a subsidy application. They, they provide advisories. They give payment solutions. And so they are just becoming like a go-to center for the farmers in that geography. Uh, it is really scaling up very fast and hopefully uh, the scale will continue around it. Working with half a million farmers, it started from the state of Bihar, UP, Chhattisgarh. I mean, that's, that's the kind of central India market. And right? hopefully this year we'll get into state of Maharashtra and Gujarat as well. Uh, so that's what Dehar does. It. It's just solving the marketing problem for the farmers. I mean. uh, next slide, please. I mean, <clears throat> look, we, I mean, it's not agriculture is, we need to really focus on not worrying, saying that we are, we have issues only, but we now need to focus, how can we really improve, regenerate and make it more, 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 more beneficial. Look, <clears throat> it's a call for action for all of us, right? In life sciences, we believe that India would need an additional one and a half trillion dollars of food and dining, uh, food, what we have it. And that's going to be the next 10 years, right? So this is something very interesting. I mean, the demand for fruits and vegetables and freshies and animal proteins is increasing uh, because of the way our dietary patterns are changing. We're moving from a grain-based diet towards a protein-based diet. However, we have issues on our natural resources. To feed around one and a half billion people, it's going to be really a challenge. Our natural resources and our supply chain is going to get stretched to an extent possible beyond the limit, right? However, we think things like alternative proteins, things like proper supply chain, things like better seeds and uh, better, better fertilizers would really help to reduce the stress, right? This is where we think India is moving towards it. We, we, we believe the other area which is interesting is going to be agri-data infrastructure, right? What the sir was saying in the opening remark, that we were a data start country. Now we're going to be a data abundant country. Right, what we have seen success in few, few, few fintech plays, right? I mean, what we see in the NPCI platform with Aadhaar and Jantan account, Jam Trinity, we're going to see the same thing happening in the agri data thing, right? Because of increasing data, increasing internet penetration, we are able to create digital records for everything what we are doing. We will have multi layered agri data with a composite map about the entire agri ecosystem, right? You will know what is being produced where, what kind of warehouses we have it, what kind of prices or storage or marketing hubs we have it. I mean, it would also provide an increased transparency because if you are able to create the right agri data stack and if you're able to bring all the data transactions onto a digital platform, 
it will help farmers get a better credit history which in turn will improve the profile and will help them get into organized banking sectors than what we had up till now and i think what we're going to see that with the increased dbt support by the government increasing data connectivity we will potentially see a improved realization for the farmers and the farm sector as a whole i mean this is something which we believe is going to happen uh, no matter what happens out the third area about what we think is is going to be very interesting is precision ag i mean for the first time farmers are now seeing that the farm labor is is scarce it's not it's not easily available and even if it's available it's expensive so the farmers will have to stop their expenditure on the on the labor and 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 the higher cost of inputs and focus on using precision agriculture to be more optimal than what they are today right they have to eliminate the hard work and the drudgery of farming it's 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 not important to keep toiling your every day in the sun breaking your back but if you can use right machines with the right technology and right support I mean, precision agriculture will really scale up, and I think that's going to be interesting, in, integral part of Indian agriculture. Right? In ten years, we will see less and less labors, but we will see smarter farmers who will have some joysticks and and apps which will do a lot of farming, uh, and that's going to be a reality, whether we like it or not. And and how it's going to be done is we're going to see more and more satellites talking about Indian agriculture, giving information to them. There will be a lot of remote sensing, data availability with that out. and hopefully we'll make a smarter smarter farms and smarter villages are going forward so that's that's what we think that we going to see how significant the indian agri is going to change in the next decade i mean which we're not talking of more far we're talking the next 8 years itself right uh next slide please manish can you go to the next slide please yeah thanks sir so this is one of the last example i want to talk about it's it's about pest control right i mean so I mean, every time government, I mean, the farmers have to spend a lot of money on uh, on spraying pesticides on the fields, and we consumers also have to take a hit because we end up eating fruits and vegetables with a lot of pesticides, residual pesticides, uh, residues available on the same, right? So sometimes it's very painful. Uh, one increased cost for the farmers and the bad health for the consumers. So what what Barrick has done has used simple IPM technologies which were available, right? using sticky traps using <clears throat> pheromone traps to capture the insects so that it doesn't it doesn't go on the crops and the farmers do not to spray pesticide on the same right it reduces the amount of inputs what we are putting it reduces the amount of water water we are using it and increases the quality of soil because you are not spraying pesticides in the soil so that's how it does around it they working with nearly <clears throat> half a half a million hectares in in india They, they've been doing this for last six, seven years. They saved so much of inputs, and that's they're becoming really a part of the farming sector now, right? I mean, in, IPM used to be a, a periphery on the on the Indian agriculture, in the, especially in the fruits and horticulture from the horticulture sector, but now that's becoming a part of the main of how farmers work around it. So, next slide, please. Yeah, next slide. I mean, so this is a photo of one of my entrepreneurs. I mean, in Lungi, I mean, the, the guy with the laptop. I mean, this is how we think the future of Indian agri is going to look like. The next, next slide, please. I mean, look, we we think this is how VCs look around it, right? I mean, uh, in 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 anything what we do, right? There are a few main areas. One is what we call it four T section, four Ts, right? One is the team. How good the team is. how big the tam is the total addressable market which is how big the tm tam is the traction is what are you able to track and what is the technology you come uh, using it if if everything comes together then you have a chance of creating a large scalable business around it large scale a, a potential to disrupt the way how the status quo is happening today right and the most important t in the entire thing is the team we believe if you have a a quality team and the b quality business idea the a quality team versus the b quality team with the a quality business idea the first the former will win the a quality team will get a better result than the b quality team in any way any 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 time so this is we i mean i want to leave the entire discussion with the thoughts in that while there are challenges in the agri sector there are also 
lot of opportunities which which we can do about it right and together if we are able to do something around it if we are able to bring the right talent the right capital uh, i think we have a chance to create a right right opportunity to disrupt the indian agriculture right and that is what's most critical because if we are able to solve even 5 or 10 problems of the 14 crore farming families i think it's a good good contribution to the society and that's what i we want to do at omniworld so with this sir i would like to uh, end my presentation and if there are any follow up questions any uh, anything any feedback please let me know over to you sir amit that uh, uh, with your uh, one hour lecture you have uh, expounded very well that uh, what the four centers of excellence of the sobit institute of engineering technology is trying to do to bring in digital technology in agriculture very effectively now i'll keep my you know summarization to the end now uh, our honorable chancellor has uh, has been viewing so far and now he has now come on stage i welcome our honorable chancellor shri kanwar shekhar vijendra so with the institute of engineering technology for this very important uh, conference and uh, he is the chief patron of this webinar series both the webinar series and he himself comes from an agriculture family and they are in the education service since 1927 they have two important universities you know in the rural areas that so i welcome our uh, honorable chancellor uh, shri kanwar shekhar vijendra is the co founder and chancellor of sobit institute of engineering and technology meerut a nac accredited dim to university in sobit university gangu uttar pradesh he is a prominent social entrepreneur based in new delhi and carries leadership role in many organizations he has been nominated as a co-chairman of the national council on education of asocha the oldest apex chamber of commerce in india for the year 2020 2021 and 2021 2022 shri kanwar shekhar vijendra is a persistent advocate of initiatives for education for all secular values crisis management through diplomatic and peaceful ways and globalized system of learning and harmonious coexistence He has been instrumental in the development of a number of higher education institutes in north india including two universities many research centers and ayurvedic medical college college of naturopathy and yogic sciences and a 100 bed ice hospital shri kanwar shekhar vijendra is instrumental in establishing four centers of excellence center for agriculture informatics and e governance research studies center for agri business and disaster management studies center for informatics development solutions and applications center for industry 4.0 technology studies and application and uh, in the university to promote informatics and technology led development in rural india he is also planning to establish a center for health informatics and computing in the university very actively involved with a number of social organization acknowledging his contribution in the areas of education and other concerned he has been copiously honored and awarded traveled widely in india and abroad to the countries like usa uk germany australia russia china south korea vietnam mongolia united arab emirates mauritius rwanda uganda and croatia uh, croatia etc to participate in various professional social and educational activities shri kanwar shekhar vijendra is a passionate gandian avid reader keen learner social worker occasional poet and a dreamer we uh, thank you very much honorable chancellor for joining as in the national webinar series on doubling farmers in kambai 2022 today we had our guest speaker mr jinesh shah and even though i have been uh, uh, you know interacting very you know virtually through various conferences and attended his lectures and so on and so forth but today it has the uh, you know he has participated and talked very effectively in the our national webinar series on the topic very important topic is that um, the the agri tech new horizon in indian agriculture and even though the topic he gave as agri tech new horizon in agriculture but 
in the first slide when he in his uh, talk he put it new horizon in indian agriculture and agritech and uh, you know you know I, and uh, it, it it is that you know this is uh, you know it is it's a very appropriate title it is because there is a new horizon in an agriculture indian agriculture and also new type of agritech models are emerging it's more appropriate thank you very much mr dinesh sham for uh, bringing out this uh, you know important uh, effective changes on that it is very important topic which you talked about it just to brief the honorable chancellor that uh, he has uh, you know given very important uh, area that uh, you know he talked about it there is a new horizon in indian agriculture and agri tech and uh, talked about a lot of problems and uh, he said it that uh, there was a time when people were not ready to jump into the area but now it is a, it is a limitless potential he is there that limitless potentials and challenges that's what he says that it is a limitless potentials and challenges which is available and uh, he is also very happy to give examples how the startups which he, for, he has funded as a venture capitalist how they are doing wonders from different areas as a one stop shop for barbers and the dairy value chain dairy you know, technology value chain and also that to how it is helping that uh, you know rather than arkias he is put it as an arya solutions this is, is a indian farmers are facing arkia solutions but he has funded a, a, you know the startup his name is arya arya solutions i felt very happy in my note also i put it that arya solutions are more needed for farmers not arkia solutions so i am very happy that he has also come out with lot of examples that how the funded startup is helping the farmers that is it is a it is an example ground example so you know it is a sterling examples which he has talked about it and then he is also you know talked about that four pillars in which you know the uh, things has to work on increasing small holders profitability and improving agriculture sustainability and enhancing small holder resilience and catalyzing you know climatic action there are four important pillars which he talked about it and then you know that you know he also put it i liked that title small holders are critically important for global food supply critically you know important for global food supply and he also in this one he given nine points where three points three points three points he has allocated for what is the what are the problems the farmers are facing especially smaller bulk farmers i am also very happy at that he is also aligned with me i always talk about the 85% of the farming holders they are all small and marginal farmers in all his slides he talked about the small farmers small farmers how to make them resilient this is three points he talked about pre production stage three points he talked about production stage and three action points for post production stage this is very important and he also talked about in india we have only 2 to 3% of the food processing activity whereas in developed countries it is 30 to 40% and about 90 3000 crores is being wasted is a food wasted because of the lack of storage and warehousing facility it is it it is it's being wasted and uh, in the simple example is that what we witness around the food corporation of india you know this is that also he mentioned it and then he raised it to the problems how the digital intervention are critical for doubling farmers income i was i was very happy and i am very happy and i i am also going to be very happy because the seven mission mode project for the digital technology in agriculture were 
as, as a professor emeritus and also for, of the university and also former director general national informatics center and uh, former deputy director general agriculture informatics of nic involved in it and agriculture blueprint from 1987 onwards 1995 uh, onwards and i i know and the seven mission mode project can be categorized into many of the slides which mr dinesh shah today talked about it. you know i was very happy and he talked about it that that low yield and productivity this is one important thing low access to credit for poor farm infrastructure and limited value addition and marketing and if the seven mission mode projects is is in digital technology in agriculture is operationalized i think uh, mr dinesh shah that today's your talk is going to be the you know these uh, you know is is uh, is an action plan to operationalize you know it, it is a way forward to operationalize the seven mission board programs as recommended in the doubling farmers income committee report 2018 in in the volume 12 volume 12b chapter 10 it's a very important thing i was very happy and it is it is the your four examples which you talked about startup are 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 there to get scaled up to the entire country that's what in every forum in every this webinar series during the last uh, uh, 76 webinar series of both the webinar uh, categories of the you know university we talk about how to scale up up to each panchayat one agri tech stop uh, tech startup or deep tech startup you know, this is our Uh, agenda this is our mission and today you spelled out very you know you know very clear with this you know uh, you know summarization i would like to uh, invite our honorable chancellor to give his validity address and also to engage you know uh, you know for a shorter time with the our guest speaker mr janesh shah over to our honorable chancellor thank you very much professor it is indeed a pleasure to be with you always and uh, i am happy to note that under your leadership already 39 webinars on this very important topic of doubling farmers income by 2022 uh, had been conducted and organized successfully by our centers today the topic new horizon in indian agriculture agri tech what role agri tech has to play and what role agri tech is playing is indeed a very important topic and i am happy that uh, professor moni was able to invite one of the best men who spoke out of passion very professionally and who was able to cover practically all aspects all challenges all solutions about the new horizon what we all wish to have what we all are talking about and how agri tech intervention can be there how technology can support this vision of our honorable prime minister that by 2022 we have to see that the income of our farmers get doubled i know that many people are not believing on this vision the same way as the hope and hype behind agri tech boom many people do not believe in that they also say that this hype agri tech will come and suddenly everything will change is also people say, no no how it is possible many times i also agree with that when i see small holding farmers when i go to villages i see that uh, where we talk about digital india we say digitalization of agriculture and sending one sms we say it is empowerment of the farmers that we are able to send one sms to all of them these challenges are there but i equally believe where there are challenges solutions are also lying there itself i was happy when uh, mr shah was talking his uh, about small holders small holding farmers 
generally what is happening that when we talk about Asian agriculture, we talk about uh, a sustainable model. We say, okay, it should be controlled agriculture models are required. Generally, we forget that in India, a country like India, it is not practically possible to have a very controlled agriculture model. And we have to look into the possibility where we can serve 130 million farmers and around 195 million hectare of land which is under cultivation. We need to empower them, whatever way, because 58 percent of our population, the livelihood, the primary source of livelihood is agriculture. And startups, agri-tech companies, venture capitalists like Mr. Shah, they all have to come together. And I'm happy that institutions are also coming together. When I talk about Shobit University, today is International Youth Day. In the morning, I was talking about the aspiration and inspiration of uh, Indian youth in perspective of higher education and national education policy 2020. So I was telling one thing over there, which even in agriculture also is there, aspirations are there. Inspirations are there. Even possibilities are there. But preparation is missing. And preparation, why it is missing? Because preparation has to be very holistic in nature. What is happening are agri-tech companies, they are working, they are doing a good job. But many of them are working in isolation. They are impactful, but their impact is limited to a very small area. When I was seeing the presentation, uh, Mr. Shah, I was happy when you mentioned the heart. And you spelled it D-E-H-A-A-T. So I found a globalization also there in the word itself, in the spelling itself. I found the rural touch also when you wrote in Hindi Dehat. It, it was not heart. It was heart. Dehat. Okay. And this Dehat, if I would like to define again, so it is Dehat. Give your hand. So from Tha, I am putting Tha there. Okay. You must be knowing Hindi. So now we have to lend our hand, we have to give our hand, we have to extend our hand to the farmers and what our agri-tech companies and people like you are doing very effectively. Very effectively, you mentioned that uh, agri-food, billions of billions of people we have to feed and our complete system is shrinking day by day, day by day. Challenges are there, we have to find solutions. We cannot go with a uh, bowl and a bag for food even. And solutions are there because we always believe in Indian mythology that God has allocated food and everything for everyone. Just if we are not wasting it. Just we, if we know how to produce it, how to work in that direction, that agri-techs are doing wonderfully. I'm happy on that. Every data is a big challenge. When I was talking about isolation, we look at uh, India, we have wonderful institutions, wonderful uh, universities, wonderful uh, research institutions. But if you ask them, can I have this data? The data is available, no doubt. But it is fragmented, segmented, and lying at different places. To get it at one place is important what decision making we want to do that is only possible when we will have that data collectively. And I am sure that this webinar series, as it is watched, followed, monitored by many of the policy makers also, not only by academicians or entrepreneurs, they are listening to us because every time, every week we are talking about it that agri data needs to be consolidated. Then only we can think of bringing the change that we all are talking about. I loved one thing, your last slide especially, uh, Mr. Shah, and I'm going to follow it, team, tem, traction, and tech. Generally what happens that when we talk about uh, anything new, 
we start from technology. We say, okay, we will adopt this technology. Then we come to the team. We say, okay, now this technology we have adopted. Now we have to have a team which knows that. But in your priorities, you came with the right system. That first team has to be there. And that team has to be there, a bigger team with the same vision, a national team. Generally, I say that we all have a purpose, but we do not have a national purpose. We have individual purposes. We have purpose of our company. We have a mission statement for our companies, but we do not have a mission statement for the nation. What we have to be, a vision has to come. So a team, a national team has to come together in agriculture sector also. And young people like you can start that integration. And Shobit University is always in for that. Where we invite agri techs, we invite everybody, okay, let us have a vision. Okay, fine, you have a vision, but let us have a national vision also. Let us make a team. Because if that team will start working, one, duplicacy of the efforts will be less. Do if we can develop a grid of the ideas and technology, we can work more effectively. If we are in position to share the data and our findings and our research, learnings and failures, then success rate will be more. And this is exactly what is required in agriculture sector. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jinesh Shah, for a wonderful presentation. I learned many new things today from you. And uh, I am... Uh, inviting you uh, that use Shobit University's platform and share your learnings, success, failure, whatsoever you wish with younger generation at a larger platform. Whatever way it can be there, it can be in a form of a micro certification, it can be just your casual talks with the students, it can be whatever way we can work together. We will be more than happy. You can share your problems. Let our students work on those problems. So many things we can do together. So thank we you, are sir. looking forward for that. And Professor Muni, thank you very much for this opportunity. And I congratulate you for your 40th very successful webinar on this wonderful theme. You are the only uh, technocrat who is really working in this direction 40 continuous weeks doing a sustainable uh, webinar on a topic with such a wonderful galaxy of eminent speakers is not very easy in the country, I, I, otherwise also. So thank you, Professor Muni, and thank you, uh, Mr. Shah. Thank you very much, uh, the Honorable Chancellor. I am able to do it because of the platform which you have given from me in the university. So the whole credit goes to you as the chief pattern of the uh, uh, this national webinar series and international webinar series. And thank Mr. Janesh Shah for your wonderful address. And I also would like to summarize that important, you know, five areas which he talked about it, which generates a lot of interest in us, you know, in our, uh, in the university for further uh, taking up with him for collaborative project. He said that 80% of the agri startups use digital technologies as part of their core offering. So, you know, this is, you know, it is a very important thing and means that, you know, the rural youth has to be trained on digital technology to also to get associated with the digital tech startups. So this is where that Center for Agricultural Informatics and Ecom Research Studies, which we have launched MTech in Agricultural Informatics and BTech in Agricultural Informatics, PG Diploma and Diploma, and MBA in Agribusiness Management for working out a digitalized agricultural value chain. So this is one area where I would like to strongly, you know, uh, you know, uh, request and also, uh, you know, recommend that Mr. Jinesh Shah that we should work together to bring in that how rural youths can be trained to, to utilize this digital agri techs and also deep tech uh, you know tech in agriculture because human resources development through skill development and entrepreneurship development is more important second one is smallholder farmers are critically important for global food supply 
food security. So the farmers, through their farmer produce organizations, have to be trained, have to be trained appropriately so that they understand the technology. And uh, they say, you know, they understand that they have to register and for everything which they do it so that the tech companies, tech startups, and the educational institutions like us, centers of excellence, will be in a position to provide value-based services to them. For third is that digital interventions are critical for digital doubling farmers' income. I'm very happy about it. That's why that seven mission mode projects of the doubling farmers' income for which the contribution has gone from uh, as the centers of excellence of the Soviet University and uh, as a professor emeritus and chairman of the centers of the university and the former director general. So the seven mission mode projects of the digital technology and agriculture and the three farm laws and the the digital agri tech can revolutionize. You said it very clearly that there's a limitless potentials and the strong challenges, you know, unforeseen challenges are becoming opportunities for us to work on it. And you know, there are for you know that about 400 agricultural commodities and livestock economies and so on and so forth. This is an important and then. Pandemic created new business models gaining importance. So, and then last one is that for farmers, technology is a tool for augmenting incomes. The four five areas where you said it, and also then you said it that agri food science discipline is emerging because by 2030, the Indians will be spending about 1.3 trillion dollar, uh, you know, INR, they will be spending on food and dining out. So the thing is that this is an area where, you know, we can capture it. There can be so many, you know, that, you know, food restaurant, you know, food systems, which can emerge, which can take benefit of this globalization of Indian food systems. And I would like to tell you that one of my, our close friend, Dr. Chris Chautrapolis from Australia, he talked about use of analytics and artificial intelligence to ensure you know uh, you know protein uh, nutrition rich soil and harvested food to minimize human disease so he's going to work with us you know and pilot projects on nutrition sensitive agriculture what what to produce what is to be produced so that you know that we can reduce the human disease more healthy food. So this is an important, these five areas which you identified, and uh, it is a very important topic which we had, thought we had it. I am very happy, and, and also our Honorable Chancellor, that uh, we'll be very happy to have your association, and the areas which you talked about it, that it is a serious requirement of starting as a certification program on many areas which you mentioned it. Because you were, you know, for, you know, the examples which you brought it in all the certification program, these startups which you have funded can be made as a case study to the students, to the rural youths, and to scale up. You know, it's not like, it's not necessary that they should reinvent the wheel. They should, re, no, they should not, they should get, they should get into invent innovations. And adoption of already innov innovative technology is more important. So with, uh, thank you very much for your, uh, you know, participation. For a person like you, you know, allocating and spending two hours with us is an important thing for you. It is uh, something like a more dollar value, you, you know, you must have, uh, you know, generated. But you have done a good, you know, investment in Indian rural youth. So let us have more Aryas, you know, in the country. I'm very happy. I was, it has gone into my head and also to my heart. So, and uh, we will bring out the issues which you brought out. We will bring it out as a policy paper from the university, and uh, it will go from the desk of our Honorable Chancellor to the respective ministry and the Honorable Ministers of the Union government. With this, we would like to close the webinar and uh, leave the studio. Thank you very much for your no. participation. Thank you. Yes. No. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chancellor. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. -bye.
Rajesh uh, wanted to say something, I think. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Let him let, let join. Achha, nahi, I believe uh, he left. Okay. Shall, shall I call him? No, if he has something to say, yes. Uh, yeah, just one. Right. I'll call. I said, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Shah? Yes, yes, sir. I prefer yeah. you, sir. Okay, you would like to respond to what uh, I said it and Mr. our Honorable Chancellor has uh, told, and you know, then uh, the, ch the Chancellor would like to discuss with you that. Yes, please carry on. Look, I mean, uh, uh, so, the, so the question was that whether we can work together. I mean, we would be happy to work together. Uh, and uh, in fact, in one of the IIC forum, which we are doing, we're trying to create a course curriculum for uh, for impact ecosystem. Uh, we're looking from a larger perspective, not an agriculture perspective, because uh, I mean, I look from uh, a situation where I, I have to raise my capital outside of the country. 85-90% of my money comes outside of India. And they're all trying to do good things for India. I mean, that they were probably the reasons of the problem themselves. But they are now trying to do something and rectify those things as a whole. And we Indians really don't do anything around it. Right? We look at putting our money and say, let's, let's finish some, somewhere internationally. Uh, so we are very keen to do something which is larger for the larger ecosystem. Uh, even if it's for agri-tech, I can bring my portfolio companies to work with Shobhit University. I can spend some time. We'll be happy to engage and figure out how, how we can scale up and this make it more efficient than what it is today. Uh, so very happy to do that, sir. Yeah, I'm really happy that you are talking about uh, impact ecosystem. This is exactly what is required. Yes, Generally, sir. we talk about educational ecosystem, agriculture ecosystem, this ecosystem, that ecosystem, but we forget that what will be the impact. And uh, in, in Shobhit University, we are uh, not only very open and flexible for all new ideas, but we wish that uh, a social impact has to be there, whatever we do. Even in our uh, all research, in everything, whatever we do, we always ask our faculty members also that, okay, research may be having an impact factor, but what is the social impact of your research, which uh, is going to be a sustainable model? It is not only for you, it is for the society at large. What uh, you are doing, and let us try to figure it out and uh, strengthen it. So there are many such things, uh, I believe, which can be done. So whenever next time you are in Delhi, I will uh, love to have a cup of tea with you. And uh, uh, let us sit sometime, let us discuss and see how we can join hands and uh, strengthen the country as a whole uh, with a special focus maybe on agriculture, maybe on uh, traditional uh, healthcare, like we are working in traditional healthcare also where we are talking about Ayurveda, naturopathy and yoga. Again, it is related to agriculture also because we are talking about herbal farming, organic farming. So many things are interconnected in the country that uh, we can uh, think of and we can work together on them. So, it, yeah. yeah. Look, sir, uh, definitely the next time in Delhi, I'll give a shout to you and see if we can catch up for a coffee and then, then exchange notes. Uh, 
but we will be very keen as a fund, as a team to do something for the country because I think that's what we need to build something back, right? I mean, there's, we have taken enough from it, so it's time to us to contribute back to the country. Yeah. Okay. So it is a pleasure indeed, and uh, thank you very much. Looking forward to meet you sometime soon. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And uh, with this, we will uh, close the webinar and uh, leave the studio. Uh, th you know, we uh, thank uh, thank all the participants who participated in this national webinar series on doubling farmers' income by 2022, and also the guest speaker and the uh, uh, the honourable chancellor who participated in this program and gave valedictory address. Thank you very much.